Hi there, and thanks for watching the next video of uh, Palo Alto Video Training Service. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, authentication, LDAP authentication, and radius authentication and integration with Palo Alto Firewalls. Uh, as uh, I already mentioned, Palo Alto Firewalls are next generation firewalls, so basically, uh, user identification is, is uh, one of the most important tasks. Uh, and this file was pretty create rules and, and policies uh, based on user. You could identify the users on Active Directory and LDAP servers, and uh, you could uh, filter those users or you could uh, limit uh, access for, for some specific users to, to, to some specific URLs or, or categories or resources and things like that. Um, and uh, you could also have radius authentication. Uh, we're going to show you how to uh, integrate your uh, Palo Alto firewall with LDAP and uh, how to do it with the uh, radius. So quickly again, we talked about <coughs> creating a lab. So this is the lab that we have. Uh, uh, Palo Alto Firewalls between two phases, one is management, one is inside, one is outside. Uh, we have our LDAP server, which is uh, our Windows 2012 uh, server, Active Directory server, on the inside network. And uh, we got uh, our uh, Palo Alto Firewall network, inside network interface connected that so that will be basically the connectivity between our LDAP server and Palo Alto Palo. and we have uh, we have a radius client uh, with, sorry we have a radius server installed free radius server installed on our PC uh, so uh, Palo Alto will be using the management interface to access the PC uh, radius server and do the radius authentication in there so let's get started so first thing first, we just make sure our firewall is up and running. Um, so we see our Palo Alto firewall is uh, up and running, and we got our Windows server up and running as well. So I just quickly show you. Our Windows server uh, is a 2012 server, and we got the uh, Active Directory services uh, installed on the server. Um, I have already created a user called Pan uh, within the user, so you within the user's container of Active Directory. Um, I do have a Palo Alto admin group as well, uh, which uh, Obviously, that user is part of that group. So we um, now need to connect to our Palo Alto Firewall and start the configuration. We just uh, log into 192.168.62.10, which is the management interface of the Palo Alto Firewall, and uh, log in with your username and password. Okay, so first thing that we have to do, um, as I mentioned, uh, because the Active Directory server is located on the inside interface, by default, as I said, uh, Palo Alto Firewall will try to um, access LDAP server or any other server services like Radius or, or anything else uh, through its uh, management interface. But for this particular case, you can see that uh, our LDAP server is located on the inside interface. So we have to make sure that we tell Palo Alto that uh, to access LDAP, you have to use your uh, inside interface, not, not uh, the management interface. So the way to do that is just go to device tab, operations, services, click on the service route configuration. So you see, use management interface for all. Let's change that, customize it, 
for LDAP and you can say for LDAP use Ethernet 1 slash 1 and the IP address is 192.168.1.10 which is the inside interface of the power of the power wall. Okay. Okay. Commit the change. <coughs> So this will basically tell uh, the firewall to use uh, inside the interface whenever there is an LDAP request or a LDAP query. So this is this is the first step. The second step that uh, we have to do is just to create an LDAP profile. Here we go. We just go to uh, uh, device tab again and under server pro server profiles. Uh, Select so like LDAP, add a new LDAP service. You just call it NGCO underscore LDAP. NGCO is our, uh, our domain name, ngco.local. Just add a server uh, name there. Our server name is JEI It's just a name, it doesn't really have to be uh, exactly the server name, we just put it in there. Um, for information, our LDAP server IP address is the IP address of our, again, our, our Active Directory server. And that's 192.168.1.2. LDAP port is 389. There are some <coughs> basic server settings that uh, to be done. So we change the type to Active Directory. Um, our uh, base DN. So if you are familiar with uh, distinguished names in Active Directory, um, you could. Uh, basically set it up but this is mainly the DN uh, for your uh, active directory as I said our domain name is ngco.local so dc equal ngco comma dc equal local is the uh, distinguished name that we will be using there um, the path for our uh, and um, so you need to know your uh, um, uh, complete uh, the end for, for, for the user that uh, you are working on. Uh, I just forgot which tab it was when. So you could uh, find this out with a command, PS query command, and uh, PS query user dash name, and it will give you the full DN for that specific user. So you just need to copy and paste it. So PS query user dash name and your username will give you the DN for that uh, specific user. So you're gonna Use that in here. Type the password for that specific user again, and uh, we're not using SSL for this particular. You could, uh, if you want, to. not using SSL, and just add it. So we added our server. That's, that was the first step. Uh, we got an LDAP profile, which is our Active Directory connection to our Active Directory server. The next step we're going to do is. Uh, Set up um, an authentication profile. So we just uh, add an authentication profile. Uh, it's going to be LDAP. And we just choose the server profile that we created in GCO underscore LDAP. Um, 
are uh, um, login attribute is some account name. That's that's the uh, account attribute for Active Directory, and our domain is ngco.local. And uh, we just call this what profile, ngco what profile. So that's uh, that's it. And if you want to limit it to some list, we could, but uh, we're gonna hello everyone for that particular authentication profile. So now we created an authentication profile, we created our uh, LLAP. So we got, we got an authentication profile that we can use with uh, uh, different applications and different things, for example, VPN and stuff. Uh, you could use that authentication profile if you want to. We got our LLAP connection. The next step that uh, we need to do is to make sure uh, we can do um, um, user identification. User identification, as I said, is an important part of uh, a lot of the firewall. So it's quite important to, to set this up properly. Otherwise, uh, the logs and stuff on your firewall is not going to make any, any sense for you. Um, so to do the user identifica identification, we just click on user identification on the left side. So we've got different uh, options here. The, the most important one is uh, uh, group mapping. So we just uh, NGCO and uh, um, and we call it SP or server profile. Whatever. So we just choose the server profile that we created and uh, the domain is gco.local. So we got some additional configuration in there that they are uh, fairly basic. You just go to the Group inclusion. If we have done all the configuration properly, we should be able to uh, query the domain uh, request. So we just click on that, and you can see that the uh, Active Directory um, um, objects are actually seen in here. So we could basically add the groups and stuff in there. So we could basically go in there and just add all the domain users uh, and uh, click on OK. So now we have a group map created uh, and all of the users in domain users will be identified from now on. And uh, basically you will see on the logs and stuff you will see a username uh, rather than just a an IP address. So now we've done all of our Active Directory settings. Click on Commit to just apply the configuration. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I will be with you on the next video.